quite clear that T20 cricket is the format by which we can globalize and grow the game worldwide. And I think this is a tr tremendous d uh, decision for all our members. Uh, we've got associate members. Uh, sometimes they say, or they, they say we, people treat them like second class citizens. That's not the case. They all play T20 cricket or shorter forms of the game in their own countries. And this is a perfect vehicle now to be able to say we've got full status when it comes to T20 matches. When we play a match, it's as important as England playing India or Australia playing South Africa. And I think it's, uh, it's going to help us tremendously in growing the game across our entire membership base. Recently, we've taken a number of decisions to break that glass ceiling between associate membership and full membership. But even so, that dream of maybe being ranked number 103 in the world and one day playing in a T20 international, um, that has been sort of a far-flung hope more than anything. And I think giving, giving these countries an opportunity to just progress slowly but surely up those rankings. Everyone will have a ranking from number one down to 104. Um, I think that will be also a tremendous way of promoting the game and helping us to grow the sport. I think if we want countries to improve and uh, become more competitive, they have to have opportunities to play. And uh, moving our T20 uh, global event to a two-year cycle as opposed to every four years, you know, we more than likely more teams are going to be competitive in that format. So 16 teams competing every two years in a major global event, that's an opportunity for some of our associate members that didn't exist before. Uh, plus, underneath the global event itself, we're going to have sub-regional, regional qualifying tournaments and a global qualifier. Again, providing more and much more regular content and opportunities for our, all our members to play international cricket at a fully international level. We were all delighted when, we, when the board agreed and sanctioned uh, an ODI World Cup qualifying league and a Test Championship league. But the devil is always in the detail and bearing in mind that um, uh, the nine teams that are playing in the Test League will be playing six series each, three home and three away over a two-year period. There was always a bit of uh, concern that perhaps we wouldn't be able to reach agreement on which constitutes the fixtures of that league. But, uh, and, and the same would apply for the ODI League. Uh, but that concern now has been alleviated. Those fixtures have all been agreed. We know exactly which series are going to take place over the course of the two-year league period or the three-year league period when it comes to 50 over cricket. Uh, and that's a big relief. Player behaviour was on the agenda uh, for both the Chief Executives Committee and the Board. It was one of the main discussion points of the meetings. Um, and uh, very encouraged really by the discussion at both. Um, there's, a, there's, I think the biggest eye opener, as we've said a number of times, was the public reaction to um, some of the incidents that have happened in recent times. And, the thought that hold on the spirit of cricket was something that belonged to a bygone age has, has been almost ridiculed and the, the public have let us know in no uncertain terms that it is integral to the future and of the sport. So with that in mind, both the Chief Executives Committee and the Board uh, have given direction. We're going to be forming a review group, the Cricket Committee will be discussing it, but the, the general direction is we need to uh, impose stricter and heavier penalties for ball tampering and other offences which are indicative of a lack of respect in the game, either for your opponent, for the umpires, or even for the fans, really. Um, so that's one, one step, is, is, is making sure that the penalties are more severe, much more of a deterrent to uh, discourage poor behaviour in the first place. But secondly, to go uh, along with that in parallel is to try and develop a culture of respect. So the spirit of cricket, what does it actually mean? No one's really quite sure. But if we say we want, we want people to be respecting the game, the opponent, the umpires, uh, the media, the fans, well, then now we, we begin to realize what we want to try and achieve. And I think that's going to be applicable both on the field players, but also off the field, in the boardrooms, how we treat each other as members. When the team arrives at a particular country, you know, what kind of facilities are we giving them? How are we treating them as, are we treating them as honored guests or as, um, you know, um, your enemy uh, in a war? We don't, we, we play cricket, we don't work or fight cricket. 